Welcome to Electra Online and now let's take a closer look to see how we actually date rocks. So the initial uranium-238 decay series is not the ideal series for us to figure out how old the earth is, but this series is better. We have a decay from rubidium-87 to strontium-87. It's called a beta decay, which means that one of the neutrons in rubidium changes itself to a proton, which means we go from 37 protons in the nucleus to 38 protons, which means the element changes from rubidium to strontium. And it turns out that the half-life is 47 billion years, which means whatever rubidium was in existence at the very beginning of the formation of the Earth, 47 billion, billion years later, half of it will have decayed into strontium. That makes it actually a really good methodology for dating. But there was one problem. It turns out that when rubidium changed into strontium 38, or I should say 87, well, there may have already been some strontium uh, 87, and so how much was of that was already there? So that's of course a big problem. If we can assume that there was zero there, then the problem would be really easy. We would measure the amount of rubidium, we would measure the amount of strontium, we'd do a ratio and then we could figure out the age. But there's an added complication that we have to realize there was probably some strontium 87 already. So when we look in the in the crust of the Earth and we look for all the different isotopes of strontium, we find that there's four of them that are relatively common. We have strontium 84, 86, 87, and 88. Notice that all of them have the same number of protons, but they have different numbers of neutrons. And notice the relative abundance in percent, 0.56%, 9.86%, 7%, and 82.58%. Now strontium 86 and 87 are stable. So we can figure out the relative abundance in nature today. So when we do a ratio of strontium 87 to strontium 86, that would be 7% divided by 9.86%. So normally you would expect a ratio of 0.71 between strontium 87 and strontium 86. If you now go find a rock that has radioactive rubidium in it, and then you figure out how much strontium is there relative to the other strontium, 86, and the number is greater than 0.71, then you know that some of that rubidium has then decayed into strontium, and you can figure out how much strontium is as a result of the decay of rubidium and not already present in the crust of the Earth. All right, so what's next? So now we have to take the half-life, 47 billion years, and find the decay constant. So here we have an equation that tells us how much rubidium we will have left when we have a certain amount initially times e to the minus lambda times t. Lambda is what we call the decay constant, which depends on the half-life. t is simply time. So the decay constant can be found by taking the natural log of 2, which is because that's when half of it will be gone, divided by the half-life, so we have the natural log of 2 divided by 47 billion years, and we get this as a decay constant, so the equation can then be said that n is equal to n sub naught times e to the minus this number times t. So what will be the amount of rubidium left if we find a rock that was formed at the very beginning of the formation of the solar system, 4.454 billion years ago, and then we can say that if we use this equation, we plug in lambda, we plug in 4.54 billion years, so we end up with 0.935, which means that today 93.5% of rubidium should be left if it had 100% at the beginning of the formation of the solar system, which is when the Earth was formed. Okay, so now let's do an example of, let's say we find a rock, we analyze it and we do two measurements. The first measurement is we do a ratio measurement between strontium 87 and strontium 86. And let's say that that ratio is equal to 0.75. Remember, when we go back, the ratio that we expect if there was no, no uh, rubidium present, we would expect the ratio to be 0.71. The fact that it's 0.75 means that we know that some of the rubidium has decayed into strontium 87. Therefore, there's an excess of strontium 87. What is that excess? Well, it'll be x divided by 9.86 equals 0.75, right? So we're looking for how much is actually there. It's not going to be 7%, it's going to be a greater percentage. So when we solve this equation for x, we find that in this particular rock, there was 7.395% strontium 
compared to the normal 7.0%, which is a 0.395% greater abundance of that strontium-87, which must have come from the decay of rubidium-87. So how old is that rock? Well, the second measurement we have to do is do the ratio between rubidium-87 and strontium-87. So it's normally 100 to 42, but now we have to compensate for that for the change in the presence of strontium-87, the 0.395% compared to normal 7.395%, which means it gives us a 100 to a 2.243 ratio change, which means that the, the amount of strontium that was there before, that, that, there, that there is now compared to strontium that is before, is going to be in this ratio. Or, vice versa, we can also say that the amount of the rubidium that's left compared to the amount of rubidium that should have been there in the first place would be 97.8%. And we do that by using this number right here, add it to 100 in the denominator, so it's 100 to that, and that would be the change in the rubidium based upon the relative ratios of the strontium and the rubidium to strontium. So normally, if the, earth was four, if the rock was 4.54 billion years old, we'd have this much left. So we know that the rock is not as old because there's more rubidium left than if it was 4.54 billion years. But all we have to do now is take that number and plug it back into our equation that came from here, but now we're taking this equation and we algebraically solve for T, which gives us this equation. So we take the natural log of the ratio, the 0.978% or the 97.8% of the original rubidium that's left divided by the decay constant, how fast rubidium decays. So we can put that number in here, that's the same numbers we have over there. And then we figured out, and it's 1.5 billion years old. So that rock would be about 1.5 billion years old, plus or minus a little bit, because there's obviously always going to be some errors that we make. But it's interesting, simply by measuring the ratio of the strontium that's in the rock divided by strontium-86. We know that ratio normally is 0.71, but here we can see that it's a little higher, which means that it must have come from the decay of rubidium. And then from that, we find the excess strontium, 0.395% more than we would normally expect. Then we do the ratio comparison between rubidium and strontium. So normally it'd be 100 to 42, but then we compare that to the one over the increase over the normal amount, or, or the measure amount, I should say, and that gives us this ratio of 100 to 2.243. Then we find the ratio of the, of the rubidium that is left compared to the rubidium that would be there, that's in that ratio, 0.978, and then we use the equation to find the age of the Earth. It's a great method, and that's one of the methods that we use to date the rocks. If we can find rubidium in a rock, and we find strontium-87 at a higher percentage than normal, we can figure out the age of the rock in this exact method. And that's how we know how old our solar system is, by using these kind of techniques to date the rocks that we find that come to us from space, through meteorites, or that we find on the moon and that we brought back from the moon during our visits to the moon during the Apollo missions. It's a pretty clever technique, and that's how they did that.